What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video we're going to check out an add-on that allows us to create procedural materials with damage inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so Fluent Materializer is a tool specifically designed to help you create procedural materials inside of Blender. So we've talked about it a little bit on the channel before, but basically what it does is it contains different node setups that you can use to create things like edgeware, where things kind of like show through like metal, where paint has been worn off. Um, it lets you add scratches and liquids, just a ton of different effects to make your objects look more realistic. So you can use it to add like weathering and other things like that. And so if you watch this in the next couple days, this tool is currently 25% off in the Blender Market Spring Sale. If you don't see it in the next few days, this is still an excellent tool, even at full price. I will link to this in the notes down below. And so first off, you want to make sure that you've enabled Fluent Materializer and you want to make sure that you've gone into the shading tab. So most of your work with Fluent Materializer is going to be done inside of the shader editor over here. So if you tap the F key, you're going to pop up a little window in here that's going to allow us to add things like layers and different edge masks and other things like that. Let's start off by adding a simple layer right here. So we're just going to take this layer and all we want to do for this one is we just want to drag these into our principled BSDF. So specifically, I'm gonna drag roughness into roughness. I'm gonna drag normal into normal. So um, just to kind of get started, and let's say that we want this to just be kind of like a standard blue material. We can kind of adjust the roughness over here um, in order to make this a little shinier. So the first effect we wanna add is a very simple effect. We wanna add scratches to our object. And so the way that we're gonna do that is if you tap the N key, it'll pop up a little window on the right hand side of the page. We'll notice how there's a fluent tab in here and we want to select this and we want to go to imperfections. And if we click on this, notice how there's a number of different kinds of imperfections in here. So there's dents and liquid stains and smudges and scratches. Well, in this case, we just want to add some scratches. So let's go ahead and let's do the scratches long right here. So when I click on that, notice how that's going to add a node in here for scratches long. And basically what this is, this is a node setup and you can kind of tab into it to see what the individual nodes are doing, but you don't really need to get into that too much, but you can look at those if you want to. But all we have to do to add scratches is just drag the normal into our normal slot in the layer. So if you drag that into this normal slot, that's going to add scratches to your object. So notice how what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to adjust the scratches by adjusting the different settings in here. So um, the closer to zero this gets, the larger the scratches are going to be. So you can also set things like the distortion. So if you don't want these to be super straight, you can kind of use this in order to adjust that. So this is an easy way to add scratches to our objects. All right, so next what I want to do is I want to add dents to this object as well. But in this case, I want the dents to actually show a different material behind them. And so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the drop down over here on the right hand side. We're gonna click on the metal option and we're gonna select one of these metals. In this case, I'm probably going to put like a galvanized metal over here. Notice how that's an object in here that we can use um, in order to make something look metallic, right? So if I was to drag this roughness, for example, into the roughness right here, it's going to make this look like a galvanized metal um, with the texture that's in here. This is a little less reflective right here. Well, I don't wanna drag this into this layer. What I wanna do is I wanna add a second layer and that layer is going to be my metal material. So I'm gonna add a new layer right here and I'm gonna drag the galvanized value for my roughness into the roughness right here. And I'm also gonna make this kind of like a grayer color, maybe something like this. But now, the problem is this isn't really doing anything, right? And the reason it's not doing anything is because it's not plugged into my principled BSDF. So what I need to do is I need to tap the F key and we're gonna add a mix layers function in here. So we're just gonna drag this up here and we're going to um, take all of the nodes that were plugged into this, and we're gonna plug them into our um, one slot. And so this mix layer is basically going to allow us to take two objects and mix them together and then output them. So we're gonna take these and hook them up to our principal BSDF. And notice how at the moment, this is going to look exactly the same, right? Because we're just passing the information that we had into our principal BSDF shader. But what we wanna do is we wanna mix these together. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag the inputs from my second object 
into the slots over here. And so again, nothing has changed because this is a mix node and it's mixing these two colors. Well, right now it's just using a mask of zero. So all that's showing through is this first color right here. But if I drag my mask to the right, notice what that does is that makes this 100% the other material, the galvanized metal material. If I was to drag it, or if I was to put a value of 0.5 in here, so if I go to 0.5, this is just gonna be a mix between the two. So what I need to do is I need to use this mask function to tell this where to show that galvanized material through the object. And so to do that, we just wanna go into our imperfections. And in this case, we wanna select the option for dented too. We're just adding the dented effect to this. Well, in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna drag the mask into our mask right here. When we do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add dents. And so it's basically going to mask out this material at the locations where that mask is. And so right now, this still doesn't look very good, right? And part of the reason for that is because our scale is too um, small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our scale to the left. And so when we drag our scale to the left, that's going to make these dents bigger. However, we still have a problem in the sense that this looks like it's showing through, but it's 100% smooth, right? Well, that's because the normals that's coming from our dents aren't actually showing through anywhere. We haven't actually plugged them into anything. So we wanna plug the mask of our dented in here, and then we wanna drag the normal of our dented down here. So when we do that, that normal effect is now gonna get applied to this gray color that's going into our normal too, like this. Well now, if we look at this, notice how that dented look in here actually has normals in here that the light is going to interact with. So you can use this in order to make this look like um, there's different dents on our objects where the old material is showing through and the paint's kind of rubbed off in those locations. And so the cool thing about this is you can actually stack multiple different mix layers together. So right now, right, we've got our whole node set up over here, but now that I've created this object that kind of has the look that I want, what I want to do is I want to make this look as if it has water droplets on it, like it's been out in the rain or something like that. So what we can do is there's a whole section in here for liquid um, nodes that we can use. Well, in this case, we want to select the option for water drops. And so the water drops is going to allow us to add a wet object effect to this. And so in this case, all we need to do is we just need to mix that effect with the material that we already have. So to do that, we're just gonna tap the F key. We're just gonna add another mix layers node right here. So now we've added that in, but what we need to do is we need to take the normals from the water drops and plug it into our normal too right here. So that's going to affect, or that's gonna make our material look like there's water coming off of it. But we also want to drag that mask into our mask right here. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna mask out the normals at the locations of the water drops and it's gonna add water to our object. All right, and so when we do this, we've got a little bit of a problem, right? Because it's basically masking this out where this other color is showing through. Well, the only thing we want this to affect is the normal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the color and drag it into both color one and color two. I'm gonna do the same thing with my metallic and the same thing with my roughness. And so when I do that, what this is doing is the only thing that this is mixing together is it's mixing the normal maps from the scratches and the dents with the normal maps, the actual water drops themselves. So now I'm retaining the same colors in here, but then I'm just adding this water effect to the top of it. And notice how you can adjust like how often this occurs by adjusting the strength as well as adjusting how big these are by adjusting the scale. So you can add large water drops, small water drops. You can also adjust the size of those as well in order to get the result that you're looking for. All right, so now let's say that we wanted to add some more wear around some of the edges in here. Well, what we could do is we can add an edge wear layer in order to do that. So, and this one's a little bit tricky. Um, one thing you wanna make sure that you do is you wanna make sure that you go over into your render properties and make sure that you've checked the box for ambient occlusion. Otherwise, this isn't going to show up in your scene. But what we wanna do is we wanna add another mix layer node. So in this case, I'm gonna tap the F key with this selected. I'm gonna click on mix layers right here. That's gonna automatically set up a mix layers node. Well, now I wanna tap the F key and I wanna do an all edges mask right here. 
So when I add an all edges mask, what that's gonna do, and it's gonna take a second to compile. And so now I wanna tap the F key and I'm gonna click on an edges mask right here. And I wanna drag that edges mask into the mask function right here. Notice how you're gonna start to get a little bit of a mask around the edges of this object. If we bump this up a little bit, notice how it's gonna get more and more, like it's gonna extend beyond these, so you have to be a little bit careful with where you put them. Um, but let's go ahead and put this to something like 0 0.05 or something like that. And so what that's doing, right, is that's giving me edge wear around some of the edges um, in my uh, in my model and you can make that stronger by adjusting your mask strength right here you just have to make sure again that that's not like extending out into your model um, any further than you want it to but in this situation right we don't want this to show an orange color through what we want is we probably wanted to use this same color right here this kind of like uh, this kind of metal color because that's what we've set as kind of our uh, base color so I'm just going to take my metal color that's down here. So this is my silver color, and I'm going to drag these colors into this node again. So I'm just gonna drag that into this node. I'll drag my metallic into the node. I'll drag the roughness, because basically what we want this to do is we want this to show that material through wherever our edge wear is, right? So we want it to be the same material. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this into the normal as well. And then we can drag this back down out of the way. And so now, if you look at that mask, right, it's kind of showing this grayer material through around the edges. And honestly, this model isn't the best example for that, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bump up our distance and maybe our mask strength a little bit, just so we can see this a little bit more. Notice how you're getting more of a wear through on the paint right here but this is a little bit too uniform right um, right now it just kind of looks like this material is just kind of like worn off uniformly we don't necessarily want that so what we're going to do is we're going to add a grunge map to that so we're just going to select our edges and we're going to pick a grunge and in this case we'll go with the grunge 03 ought to work just fine and what we want to do is we want to take that grunge map and we want to drag the result into the texture node right here. And so notice how when we drag that into the texture node, what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the grunge in order to set the shape of the wear that's showing up on our surface. So notice how now, instead of having that kind of like uniform look, it's kind of like wearing this off in the grunge pattern that's in here. And you can adjust things like the scale of the grunge just by clicking and dragging this a little bit. So you can set the scale smaller or larger. You can also adjust the seed in order to randomize it a little bit. But this is a great way to kind of add some random wear around some of the edges inside of your model, just like this. All right, and then the final thing I wanna talk about is something that was added, I think, in version 1.1. I didn't realize this was in here, but what it's done is they've given us the ability now to add a paint mask to an object. And so basically what I've done is I've just taken, um, they've got a stucco material in here under the city, and I've just dragged the normals into um, into my mix layer shader that I have right here. So this is creating kind of a stucco look. Notice how there's a tool in here to paint a mask. So if I click on this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take me over into um, texture paint mode over here on the left-hand side. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to paint a color in here. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my strength down a little bit. I'm gonna adjust my radius down just a bit as well, but what I can do is I can paint on top of this object right here, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a custom mask that's gonna dictate where each material shows through, like this. So, once I'm done, and so notice what that's done right here is that's taken that mask and it's plugged it into our surface. We don't necessarily want that. We want that mask plugged into our mix layers right here, but then we can take that BSDF and plug it into our surface. So basically what it's done is it's come in here and it's painted out this material right here where the old material is showing through. But you can use this to paint things on your objects in locations where you want different things to show through. So you can use this in order to create a mask is basically what you're able to do. And if you ever wanna edit that mask, you can just select this, tap the F key, and then go in here and click on the option for edit a painted mask. That'll just take you back into edit mode. So let's say you wanted to add some more paint in here, for example, and then we'll just drag our BSDF back into our surface 
and we'll call it good. So notice how you're able to edit these in addition. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what else you'd like to do with Fluent Materializer. Remember that is on sale through the end of the day Monday. Even if you don't catch this during the sale though, it's a great tool for creating procedural materials. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.